Welcome everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about resistance and specifically resistance when you're trying to do something out of the comfort zone. Specifically resistance when you're trying to do your passion, when you're trying to do the things you feel called to do. Like let's say you're a writer or a painter. It's that resistance when you go to sit down to write every day. It's that resistance when you go to paint. For me, it's doing these videos. It's the resistance that I feel sometimes when I go to shoot these videos. That is today's topic. I'm gonna teach you all about resistance. And in the end, I'm gonna give you some practical tips and techniques that you can do to help overcome resistance. The short answer is you just gotta sit down and do it and nobody wants to hear that, <laughs> myself included. But I'm also gonna give you some more information that'll help you in that area. Let's get started. Resistance. Now, again, resistance, we're talking about when we're trying to go after those things that we're passionate about. We're trying to do new things in our lives. I mean, most commonly we can all relate with some of these, whether you're writing, whether you're a painter, whether you're shooting these videos, for example, whether you want to work out, you know, you, you start working out. It's been the new year, right? And I'm sure a lot of you had a resolution of I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to get fit. You know, how many of you are still doing it? You know, typically it's the first month of the year is when most people will, will go to the gym. But by the time the second and third month come, it's like a 75% drop off, I think, on the statistics. And there's reasons for that. But part of that is resistance. We give in to that resistance. We allow the ego to hold us back. Um, diet, you know, say you want it again, part of a new year's resolution. I'm going to get fit. I'm going to get in shape. I'm going to have a new diet and all this. Well, a lot of this stuff starts to fizzle out over time, you know, starting a meditation practice, doing anything, really anything new, anything out of the ordinary passion wise, changing what's safe and familiar for you. You're going to experience a lot of resistance. And here's why the ego likes what's safe and familiar. The ego and your central nervous system brain, because essentially we have two brains. We have our thinking, rational, conscious mind that we all consider the brain. And then we have a much older brain. It's like a billion years old, I think. It's been since worms, basically. This worm brain, which is our central nervous system. And the central nervous system ties in right to one of like the brain stem. And then I think there's one more brain component that the you know, subconscious or central nervous system brain lives in. Well, that central nervous system brain tries to keep us safe. And by safe, I don't necessarily mean safe because many people end up stuck in situations that aren't objectively safe, but they're familiar. The ego and the central nervous system see familiar as safe because it's known. It's an understood quantity. The devil you know, for example, versus the devil that you don't. Well, the ego wants to keep us safe. The central nervous system wants to keep us safe and familiar. And anytime we choose to reach out, we reach out of that comfort zone, the ego and the central nervous system will do their best to steer us back into the bubble. They come up with all sorts of reasons, right? Reasons why. You can't write every day because, oh, now, you know, we need to clean the garage and, oh, I need, you know, I need to go do the dishes or I need to cook dinner or this or that. Or you end up with the fears, the fear of failure. What if I fail? What if I sit down and I spend a month writing this book and then I go to sell it and nothing happens? <laughs> Even the worst one is the e what the ego doesn't really mind the failure so much. That's just a stick to keep you where you are. What the ego is really afraid of is success. What if you succeeded? Now imagine all these things would change in your life. If you sold that novel and you, and you became a successful novelist, your whole life would change. Well, that would really screw up the plan of the ego and the central nervous system who want to keep you in the safe and the familiar. Your whole life would change. So the ego is more afraid of your success than your failure. Because why? Success means everything changes and the ego fears the change. Resistance comes in every shape, flavor, color, and size you could possibly imagine. A thousand different forms and shapes and colors, and everyone deals with it to some degree. We all have egos, and by ego, don't confuse what I mean by ego. Ego does not mean arrogance. A lot of times ego is synonymous with you have arrogance if you have a big ego. No, what I mean by ego is the false self. What I mean by ego is the personality, is the person that you think you are. You know, you think you're real. John Smith, you know, who's an electrician and who has a family and two children and a car and who likes to play golf. You think that's real. You think that's really who you are. And on one level it is, to, to be fair. But the reality is that's just the self. That's just the ego. That's the false self. It's 
the barrier between us and the outer, when we relate to the world in a subject object way, such that you and I are separate entities, we need an ego, it's an interface. It's to help us interface with this separate world. Even though the reality is the entire world is one. The entire universe is merely the mirror of what's going on inside of you. But there's practical reasons why we need an ego. We gotta pay our taxes. <laughs> we gotta know what our zip code is. We gotta go to work. So for those things, then ego, a self is constructed that helps us interact with the world in a separate way. Well, again, the ego has all sorts of excuses, all sorts of reasons, and they're all self-sabotage. It's all to stop you from reaching out of this comfort zone. There's many ways that we can help to overcome this, but also understand too, two of the most deadly uh, tools of resistance, two of the most deadly tools of the ego and of the central nervous system in keeping you safe and stuck are procrastination and perfectionism. You will always have something better to do in your mind than what it is that you wanna do. When I first started making these videos, it was funny. I, I didn't have much resistance when I was just abstractly planning things, right? I was like, oh, I'll make this channel and I'll talk about all the spiritual stuff. And I was really excited and passionate about it. Well, the first video I made, right? I was about to start writing. I had my pen in my hand and I was about to write it. And then when I looked down, I saw that my markers, kind of as they are right now, are a little in disarray. And I had this thought, the ego's clever and sneaky when it comes to resistance. Oh. I need to organize these markers before I write this video because they're a mess. But do you see how I was quite literally about to take the action and the ego had to figure out its last ditch effort to stop me. It couldn't stop me with normal, normal fears and all that because I was ready to go, I was motivated. But it caught me with this sly kind of out of left field thought. Oh, I should organize the markers that are down here. And as soon as I went to do it, I, I caught myself awareness. I was, oh, I was like this clever, this clever son of a gun, you know, he's got me, he's got me tricked again that I needed to do that. So what I did then was I immediately started writing the first whiteboard out because that's one of the ways to overcome the resistance is just to do it. You know, that's that. And perfectionism is probably one of the most insidious ones. With perfectionism, the ego tricks you into thinking it's on your side, the central nervous system. It says, oh yeah, you know what? We should write that book. Oh, we should paint that painting. But in order to get the most success out of this, we need to make it perfect. And in perfectionism, you will never finish it because it will never be perfect. First of all, what is perfect? What is the metric by which you're measuring this against perfect? You don't know because there isn't one. So you're constantly trying to achieve this perfection that doesn't exist. You have no measure by which to say when it's perfect or not. So you get stuck in this infinite loop of just never finishing it because it's not perfect. And a lot of that comes from childhood and a lot of that gets baked into our identity. How to break over, you know, how to break through this resistance. And, and it's right in step one. You have to get started now. I know it sounds kind of cliche. Oh, Lance, you made this whole video just to tell me that the way to work out is just to work out. Well, partially, yeah, I mean, Every time you sit down to write, every time you go to the gym, every time you make the better choice with your food, every time you meditate in the morning, you're making it a little easier and easier for you. It's becoming part of your identity. It takes time though. It takes time for the neural networks in your brain to begin to wire and fire together on those habits you're trying to create. I believe the science says it's about 21 days. It takes about 21 days for any sort of action or habit or identity change to become solid enough that it has its own momentum going. For example, meditation. You may have to use willpower for the first 21 days to sit down and meditate. It becomes the habit. It becomes the new familiar. It becomes the new safe. Then your ego protects it. Then your ego says, why aren't you meditating? We always meditate in the morning, right? Now we have that resistance working for us rather than against us. So step one is you have to just get started. And one of the best ways to overcome perfectionism is first of all, to realize there is no such thing as perfect. You are trying to create something against a measure that doesn't exist. You have no way of knowing when it's perfect and when it's not except this ever-changing mental picture that your ego is just gonna keep tweaking and tweaking until you never finish it. Understand that taking the imperfect action now is itself perfect. That is the perfect action to take because as we sit down and start to write, as we start making the videos, as we sit down to meditate, we're gonna start learning. We're gonna be learning from our mistakes and from our successes. And as we learn and, and integrate our failures into success, we let go of the failure and we stay with the success and we keep moving forward in that direction. It's kind of like when a baby learns to walk. A baby doesn't just sit there and go, well, I'm not gonna walk until I'm perfect at doing it. It, it would never walk. It has to get up and fall down and get up and crawl and fall down. The baby doesn't just pop out running full speed, you know, at an Olympic gold pace. 
the baby crawls, it falls over, it's learning how to use its muscles, it's learning how to balance itself and have that, you know, interoception of its body and where it is in 3D space. If the baby waited to be perfect before it walked, it would never walk. And in the same way, we cannot, and I am someone who used to be crippled by perfectionism, believe me, I understand a lot of that comes from childhood dynamics. Um, but the only way forward is imperfect action. And as you start to take that action and you start right now, the universe will quickly get your back. And normally the resistance is really high when you first get started, but I mean, literally within five or 10 minutes, you'll notice it dies right down and you're in the flow. You start to become in the flow and then God fills in the details. You know, the old saying is, oh, the devil's in the details. Well, I don't like that saying. I, I like to flip it on its head. No, God's in the details. The second you start going towards something, you don't have to know how it's gonna work out. Let God figure that out. Let the universe, let source fill in the details because that's what happens. But perfectionism is insidious and you know, it takes time to kind of get over that. But you can, that's the good news. You just gotta start right now. Step two. Now, a lot of resistance comes from our identity, who we're busy being. Because what our identity is, what our beliefs are, dictate what's safe and familiar to the ego and the central nervous system. If you have beliefs that you're not smart enough to be a writer, or if you have beliefs that your paintings aren't good enough to be sold, well, that, those beliefs are gonna create self-sabotage. So sometimes if the resistance is really strong and you're like, Lance, I've tried, I've painted 60 days in a row and then that resistance is just overwhelming to where I cannot get past it. Well, to me, that sounds like you've got some identity and belief work to do. You've gotta start looking at the self-image and changing it. First, we have to become aware of the self-image. We have to become aware of what beliefs and what characteristics of our identity are holding us back. Where are we being held back by ourselves? Do we have a poverty mindset? Do we have a victim mentality? Do we have a suffering mentality that we're born to suffer, that everything's always gonna be hard for us in our life? Is life easy or hard? Identify all this. We have to become aware first before we can make the change. When we go to work with self-image, we have to identify the parts of the self-image that need to change. And in doing so, we have to understand logically why those things don't serve us so that we will accept the new self-image we're trying to wire in. A lot of times, resistance comes from your beliefs. If you don't believe you can be happy and healthy and wealthy and with your soulmate, then those things will never work out for you because you'll always be rejecting it on an energy level. You'll always be rejecting it at your beliefs, which manifest your thoughts and emotions and in your actions and your energy. Another way that you can get over resistance is letting go of the outcome. Now this becomes kind of a paradox because back to our city of gold reference where we're walking the path towards the city of gold. The city of gold is the outcome. We do need to know the goal. We do need to know, say, I'm going to write a novel and I'm going to sell it. That's my goal. That is my end goal. But we have to keep the goal in mind so that the universe will fill in the cooperative components to get us there. But at the same time, we have to let go of our needy attachment to the outcome. We have to let go of our neediness of this book has to be successful. And if it's not goes just the way I think it is, then it's a failure and this and that. Because that energy will always keep the novel out of reach. It will keep the success out of reach. Think about relationship. If you've ever been with someone that's been just needing you or you've been the needy one, I've been both. I've been on both sides of the fence. <laughs> you know that relationship doesn't work because the neediness pushes away the other person because they're like, whoa, buddy, I just feel like you want from me, but you're not giving. You're just having that needy energy. Well, the same with the universe. When you need the book, when you need to reach the city of gold, it's always gonna be at arm's length. So we have to develop a consciousness where we're aware of the end goal that we're going for, but, and I love this quote, we have to be passionately neutral, passionately neutral about it, such that we allow the universe to give us an outcome. And it might be different than what we thought it was, and usually it's better than what we thought it was. If we're so attached to making, you know, say we wanna sell this book and it's like, I have to make $100,000. Well, maybe the universe was gonna give you a million, but because you were so focused on the 100,000, you blocked the million from coming, you know? So be passionately neutral, let go of the outcome, have the goal, but let go of our attachment to it. Another way we can help to work through resistance is understand that you aren't doing anything. Right? When you sit down to write, when you sit down to paint, when you sit down to record, like me recording these videos, I'm not doing this. The universe and God are working through me. And I don't mean that in like some egotistical way. I just mean that when you do creative expression, when you do anything in this universe, you are a conduit for source to flow through you. All of the great poets, all of the great writers, all of the great 
you know, people like Mozart and Bach that create music, if you ask any of them, the majority of them will say, look, I just, I get a connection to source and I'm just furiously copying down as fast as I can before the door closes, <laughs> you know? And that's what happens with all of us when we do these things. We aren't doing any of these things. We're merely creating the conditions such that the universe can flow through us and show us the path towards the goal. We are a conduit. Our job is to show up, get started and allow the flow. Our job is to overcome that initial resistance such that we can make the connection and allow it to flow through us. And finally, if none of these is enough to get your inner resistance kicked over, normally it's because identity and belief is holding you back. That's normally the biggest component. If you have, if you've already tried like, Hey man, I've tried to sit down. I sat down and, and I wrote for 60 days straight and I'm still stuck. It's usually belief, but here's another way that you can reframe it. This helped me out tremendously when I was starting this channel um, and other things in my life too, is this concept that we all have a purpose with whatever it is we feel called to do. Let's say it's write the book, for example. We all have a purpose. And normally our creative expression will help other people on this planet. You know, and right in making these videos, my goal is to help you. My goal is to help you become aware of yourself, aware of how reality works, such that you can manifest the life that you want. I mean, you see it on my channel banner, live your dream life. I sincerely mean that. I'm doing it for myself, and as I'm learning to do it for myself, and as I've employed it already successfully in years past, I'm sharing that information with you to help your life be better. Well, in the same token, whatever your creative expression may be, is you, you have a purpose, and the purpose is normally helping others, whether it's through music, whether it's through dance, or writing, or any of that stuff. Don't hold back your gifts from us, right? Don't hold back what you're meant to share with all of us. It's a selfish thing. You are here to help by sharing your gift with everyone on this planet. And if you keep it to yourself, if you let resistance kind of beat you down, well, in a way then you're taking your gift from all of us. You're meant to shine your light. You're meant to give to everyone and reveal, you know, what that creative spirit is within you and what, you're fe what you felt called to do in this life. So don't hold back from others. But that mind flip really helped me because I never thought about it like that, that, you know, regardless of what you're doing, it's going to help other people somehow or another. And by not doing it, you're actually doing a disservice to a lot of people in the world. And when I thought about it in that way, it gave me that shift that let me get much farther along, excuse me, in sharing what I'm feeling called to share, you know? But anyway, my friends, that is resistance. I, you know, I've been dealing with this for the last three days. Uh, I didn't record a video yesterday. I, a lot of times I record three or four videos in one day. So I get a little buffer in case I get stuck with resistance, <laughs> but I was sick for like four days. And then I had resistance for like two days after I was sick. And I still got a little sniffy sniffle thing going on there. And as I myself was grappling with it, I was like, you know, this would make for a great video. And I'll tell you, when I was starting to plan this video out, I had resistance for the first 15 minutes that I was researching and I was writing and I was thinking about it. But as I got more and more into it, probably around the time that I got to about this far on the whiteboard, finally I had the connection again and the flow started coming. So this is a great example for you guys. Just get started. Sometimes you got to take a couple steps before the universe goes, ah, I see you overcome the resistance. I see your desire is strong enough. Now I'm going to give you the cooperative components. And a great book on resistance is called The War of Art. And I don't mean the art of war. I mean the war of art by Stephen Pressfield. It's a great book. It's oddly written structure wise, but it goes into the depths of resistance and how to break through it, especially when you're doing any kind of creative passion, but even across your whole life. And the odd thing is in this third part of his book, he ends on a very spiritual note about the self and the ego and all of that. He gets into all the spiritual stuff. It's kind of interesting. Anyway, my friends, I hope you make it a great day and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.